It may sound strange to current gamers, considering that pretty much every game today comes in its own case or jewel case or other storage solution, but back in the day, there wasn't this level of forethought. You wanted a game, it came in a cardboard box. And if you had the space to keep this increasingly precious specimen safe, you were a wizard or something. Most of the time, these boxes went straight to the trash. I preferred cutting the fronts out and sticking them to the walls of my room. Over in Japan, the scene was much the same, except for Namco titles. Realizing the extreme collectability of games like Quest of Kai and Karnov, they decided to outfit their players with something a little more durable. Each Namco game, in addition to a superfluous T, came in a hard black case, sometimes needing a crowbar to rest open, which locked the game into a snap-down compartment and included a holding bar for the manual, obligatory registration card, frequently repurposed as a password sheet, and advertising materials. Ooh, Rolling Thunder! Better tell Mark about that one. And Quinty, aka Mendel Palace, aka what Game Freak did before Pokemon. And of course, the super cute Splatterhouse One Pocket Graffiti. Anyway, since there wasn't an absolute standardization among Famicom carts like there was with NES carts, the games aren't completely transferable between cases. If your vicious attack shaman gets a hold of your case for Wagyan Land 1, you can't just slap it into a spare Wagyan Land 3 case. A little less convenient, but a little more interesting. It's a darn spiffy idea, exceptionally resilient. These games are in fantastic shape for being up to 23 years old. It's kind of a shame we never got this treatment in the States. Well, for NES games, anyway. Best we had were aftermarket solutions, like those big clear mabobs that everyone had, and which could hold Genesis games, if Genesis games, and indeed Master System cards, didn't already know which way was up and got on board the big old case wagon. And then Sega decided they needed to save money, and all these awesome protective devices went poof. There went that. So let's celebrate a historical outlier, a well-designed case for an 8-bit Nintendo game, proving that, back in the day, Namco were so awesome, they could just jam a T at the end of their name and not look pretentious. And that's something. I'm still going to take them to task about constantly dropping the Y in Wagyan, though. <laughs>